Hey people, Indrid here, 1v1, Calderas, Refinery, Blue Side, Choco Bambus with a Farseer support hero fighting in melee, some powerful buffs and control abilities, the Exodite's elite scheme here. Over on the red side, we have this fella, translates I believe as Bandit with a Tech Marine, starts off in ranged combat, puts us a good damage, can also support with structures and repair, Red Scorpion's badge. But I don't believe those are red scorpion colours, I think they're like greyish. But uh, a successor chapter or something maybe. Orcs are super fun, but there's no orcs here. So uh, no fun for you. Scouts going to go east and cap things, I guess. We do have Howling Banshees for Choco Bambus. Power swords at the ready. And pistols that don't really do much. Maybe just get another sword, ladies, to be honest. Your exarch has got the idea. Tactical Marines out for Bandit, going towards the mid. I think this guy also known as Sky Silver in the past, perhaps. Tech Marines going for the cap. Banshees could pounce, but they're going west. Maybe they'll go mid after they see this capping going on. Farsi is on the east side. She just starts out like 30 DPS melee, and she can throw Guide on herself to get up to 39-ish DPS range as it is for Choco Bambus and more scouts for Bandit. Farseer is being annoying. Tech Marine did grab the mid. All of a sudden there's going to be a bunch of Boltify. Is Bandit overreacting to this here? Dragging their entire army to help deal with this Farseer. I mean it will get them off the field which could yeah which could mean subsequent engagements are much easier if there is a subsequent engagement because Choco Bambus might just avoid fights now that the Farsi is off the field. Choco Bambus, one of the real old guard. This is a name I've heard for many, many years. 476 to 500. There's the 2 to 1, and they're straight on the power, I guess. Do we have a flamer on the way? No flamer on the way. Rangers can take pot shots. That was on the tech marine there. You've got to move and shoot, move and shoot. Oh, tax aren't interested in in the power bash, neither are the tech marine anymore. They're going to stop this decap, I guess. I feel like maybe they should have pushed the action, got a bash on that node. At least they stopped the cap. They didn't stop the decap, though. Banshees, meanwhile, you see this? Decisive action from Choco Bambus means that power is being bashed. Here comes shotgun scouts with some bolter fellas, too, which does get rid of them. They bashed at least one gen. I'm not sure if there was more than one there. Double Rangers for Choco Bambus. So he might see Assault Squad up for Bandit to help jump in there. We do have a Master Crafted Bolter with high powered shot and a bunch of DPS out the gate. Not really much use taking cover against snipers. They're still going to hit you. Be aggressive, start shooting the crap out of them. Farsi is just hanging out here. Has the Armor of Fortune. Going for that central VP. They have noded up there, but no gens yet for Choco Bambus. I think they used a high powered shot. Now they're going to take ranger shots though, and some pew pew from the guardians, trying to get some cover, but it's hard to get cover from multiple angles. They're taking a lot of damage from the rangers. Here come shotgun scouts. The blast was too late to knock back the Farsia, already retreating. Yeah, rangers can do a number on a hero, a low level hero. That damage really does add up. We've got Bionics here for the Tech Marine. He seems to be quite wary of the presence of Banshees. High powered shot for suppression, Bionics to knock them away. But we haven't really seen them go after a unit yet. They got some XP for bashing power, I think. And they do have shotgun scouts in play. But are they over investing in the Tech Marine a bit here? Especially with the Bionics, I feel like high powered shot and the shotgun blast should be enough but I mean it's not bad to have especially when the Farsi is around you can high powered shot the Banshees to try and get a model maybe shotgun blast the Farsi if she gets close and then you still have Bionics the Farsi's sword always is glowy seems glowier than usual but maybe it's an Exodite scheme thing or maybe it's always like that and I'm just going mental 422 to 500 I mean I've casted enough games to go mental let me tell you that Scouts clinging to life. Oh, maybe not. 
getting closer to the rangers, trying to shotgun them out of there. We've got double shotgun scouts now. And the sergeant on the way for these fellas. Gives them a grenade. Shuriken cannon with guide up on it. Going to get grenaded. There's fortune to help them. And oh, I wonder if that prevented a wipe there. Fortune from the armor of fortune. 30% damage resistance. Guide given a 30% damage bonus or buff. And a 30 and a 30% range increase too. It's pretty nice. Banshees sent packing. And Bandit outnumbered, but actually looking solid with all of these investments they've made. To the Tech Marine and the Scouts. They're doing okay with it, eh? 418 to 500. One to one cap on the power. And those are double Scout Sergeant Scout fellas. Getting behind this rock to be annoying. Rangers have to wheel all the way out here to get shots in. Shuriken is set up already. Doesn't want to get closer because of grenades and stuff, I think. And we've got a turret going up from Bandit. Tarantula turret. Tech Marine can build them for, I think it's 200 rep 30 power. Also costs you some pop. The Tarantula Turret variant will suppress infantry, do tons of damage if it gets close, but you can upgrade it for free into a Missile Turret in Tier 2. But for now, it's just going to be annoying and stop them easily getting the power back. They can get around it, as you can see. And those turrets won't shoot at things in melee range. Cool to see a turret out in a, in a 1v1, I think. Farseer gets around. It's shooting at the power. Actually bashed that gen. Well done. Turret fella. 382 to 500. Can it get both gens down? I think it is before they can take it out. Eldar don't have, have any flamer type weapons in tier 1. So they can struggle to deal with this kind of thing. Especially since they don't have a jump troop and stuff. Ranger pot shots from far away don't do much. Got to try and use infiltration with a webway or something, or maybe get the uh, try and get the banshees around. But they got there in the end. Rangers on capping duty, three six nine to five hundred. As the players start to think about their tier two, so Choco Bambus invested in double rangers and a shuriken and aspect of fleetness and war gear, but gets the tier two going first. I mean. Bandit did spend a lot of power as well, upgrading stuff. Probably relatively even. There's Guide on those Rangers. And yeah, they're taking chunks off that Tech Marine. Here come Banshees, using Fleet of Foot and jumping over stuff. I feel like sometimes it slows them down, jumping over stuff. I wonder if they could speed up the animation a bit. There seems to be a little bit of a delay after they land. I mean, it doesn't look bad because they're like, they're kind of landing heavily. But, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe speed up the actual jump part. See that? I think it would have been faster just to run around the rocks there, ladies. But they'll just go as the crow flies and jump over things. 369 to 466. There's the tier 2s. Was there anything queued up in terms of X arcs and stuff? Don't see it. We'll have to see a Dreadnought up for... Bandit, but that's because I always want to see Dreadnoughts up. Should be mandated that a Tech Marine has to get a Dreadnought in tier 2. You should just auto-build. Farseer puts Fortune on herself. And got the decap. Couldn't quite get the cap. Maybe they should have just stayed on the cap there. Throw Fortune on themselves and got it. Banshees. Oh, they got the wreck point. Did they try grenades? I heard explosions. I think they messed up the grenade though. Well, missed it rather. So it can be hard to hit a single entity with a retreat grenade. Dreadnought it is for Bandit and a Falcon for Choco Bambus. Are they going to target that Tech Marine again? Targeting the Tactical Marines at the moment. There's that high powered shot. War shout not quite close enough to suppress. And Banshee's back off. Because they know this guy has Bionics for the powerful sweep. They've been dealt with, dealt with quite well again, the Banshees. Certainly has the tools to do it. Maybe they could have done without, but in that instance, you saw the, the scouts weren't around to lend a hand with the 
with the shotgun. So having the bionics really helped in that instance, just sent the, the banshees away. Didn't even want to get close, but then he runs into a shuriken. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. What were they up to? Did they have orbs and they were trying to throw them on the falcon? Maybe they just didn't think the shuriken was going to set up. They're trying to get into melee with it. Maybe they didn't even know the shuriken was there when they sent them over. Can't always see what we can see, these guys. We have no fog of war. Dreadnought. Hell, hey, with a multi melter. Awesome. It's an awesome weapon, just rarely seen. Because melee dreadnoughts are really good. Assault kind of dreadnoughts are really good. This multi melter does good damage to all targets, but you have to get relatively close for it. Which is often often death for a walker, and you don't get the the melee prowess of taking on enemy melee squads with the Emperor's Fist and stuff. Right Lance sent away. It is a powerful anti-vehicle weapon though, and the Falcon does have some anti-vehicle weaponry on it. See the chunks that the multi is doing, look at that. Typically a player will set the Dreadnought to melee mode. That way he'll chase things around and shoot them, and when he gets close enough, smack them. Which are all good things for a Dreadnought to do. Pity that he doesn't keep the, uh... Yeah, he doesn't keep the Flamer underneath the Gauntlet. That could be cool. A cool little boost for the multi Dreadnought, maybe, if he kept the Flamer. Sniper shots going in. We've got Missile Launcher Tactical Marines with their Sergeant. The Sergeant with a Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw, but don't be fooled. He does more DPS with his bolt pistol than those fellas do with their bolt guns. And he's pretty good in melee. Also provides the and they show no no fear ability. Charged up by damage. Not sure if they have it available yet. Oh, these are new tacks out of the drop pod, look. Typically when tacks are dropped in and given a sergeant, it means they're becoming stone guard veterans. But not in this case. Where are the other tacks? They are running. They got messed up on the east side by rangers I guess. Dreadnought needs to be a little bit careful. Bright Lance was set up but the vanguard force of scouts sent in and they had to duck inside of the falcon to get away. Scouts dropping models but not too bad. They don't cost power to reinforce when they have shotguns. Only when they have sniper raffles. Drop another model. Now they're infiltrated in an odd place. Just to provide some vision, maybe. What is this Dreadnought doing? Dreadnought's going so far forward. Falcon is here. Bright Lance is here. Banshees can't really engage. They're struggling with the jumping again. Double scout repairs. And missile launch attacks are here too. They don't dare push the Bright Lance forward. Autark dropping in. With those entry grenades that stun, knock back and damage. Jumps over the Dreadnought, heals herself, buffs herself, and runs away. Bright Lance is in a different spot now. And it, oh, it can get shots, look at that. Dreadnought goes deeper into his little crevice of hiding. Banshee's being reinforced. Meanwhile, though, the map is turning red. No, it's not. Rangers are doing some capping. Meanwhile, look, they're taking the red, the red player's natural VP. Tech Marine still, oh, he's just repurchased gonna say steel down but they got repurchased we have a fusion gun autark as well 30 melted dps just on the autark and she is super mobile so this dreadnought's in trouble i don't know why it was sent up this far i don't know what the i don't know what the idea was to catch the falcon maybe but it's not infiltrate i mean you could see it it's not there's no true line of sight in this game falcon needs to move can they get the Falcon? Oh, they gave up getting it. They gave up getting it. Right Lance is not facing the Dreadnought. Needs to move. Fusion Gun Autark is getting shots. Falcon continues to get shots. Dreadnought does get the Falcon down, but is going to fall here. I'm not sure why the Bright Lance wasn't helping. It would have would have got the, uh, the Dreadnought a lot quicker, I think, if it was helping. And Guide was put on the Banshees, not on the... On the anti-vehicle weapons but they trade vehicles the dreadnoughts worth more especially with the multi melter upgrade attached another falcon on the way for choco bambus we do indeed have some stern guard and they replaced 
They replaced the marines that had the missile launcher. That's strange. Because these guys also have a sergeant. They could have got stern guard here and got all of the models back. I wonder if they upgraded the wrong squad by accident. Because this is this guy's just running out with only a sergeant. You can't get two stone guard veteran squads, buddy. Not sure what he's up to. 258 to 330. Some strange plays from Bandit, has to be said. Walking that tech marine up into death. Weird stuff with the dreadnought and the scouts over here. I mean the scouts survived at least. And upgrading the stone guard in the way that they did. All some odd things. Okay, they retreated back and are reinforcing. Yeah, I wonder if they did the, they upgraded the wrong squad. Because these guys had a missile launcher that, that cost 35 power and now it's just gone. And there's another Falcon. They could have had a missile launcher and Stone Guard veterans to help deal with it. As it stands though, Stone Guard loading in their Hellfire rounds to deal some acidic damage over time to those Banshees, which isn't nice. But, you know, heresy and stuff. No need for haste. Scouts. Generator Must have decent levels. No, they're both level 1 still. 258 to 309. They're pushing quite hard here. Stone Guard doing some decapping. Scouts going for grenades on the Banshees. And really good grenades in the end. Banshees are going to wipe, I think. No, they got their Exarch up just in time. They're also reinforcing off that Falcon. They barely get away with only the Exarch alive has those mirror swords bionics for the tech marine well powerful sweep does it give him some yeah 20% more melee damage and some health regen look at that 258 to 285 the tech marine has it doesn't tell us here but he starts with 18 dps melee 10 dps more than the plague champion I'd like to make clear I still think I mean, I have no ev evidence for this. Because I think they attack once every second. Like a marine with a gun. So their damage per hit in melee is the same as their DPS. And I've always wondered if the Plague Champion was given 8 DPS by mistake. And it was meant to be 18. And they just missed the 1 or something. On the other hand. If they were just going to copy paste the Tech Marine's weapon profile. Then... That wouldn't have happened, so I don't know. I'm just always always confused by the Plague Champion's very, very low melee damage out the gate. Nobody's really provided a, a reason for it. They're just like, this is what he's like, don't mess with him, I guess. He's still effective with his terrible melee, so they're like, whatever, just leave it. Which I can understand. Just uh, not especially happy about this. Autark is really far back at the moment. You gonna bash power or something? Triple cap, by the way, for Choco Bambus while I was rambling about the Plague Champion again. A game he's not even in right now. Bandit down to three units. A Falcon to deal with. Some scouts died at some point while I was rambling too. And they're taking Ranger shots. The Rangers are continuing to be pretty awesome, actually. Both have their Pathfinder gear. Land Raider Redeemer on the way for Bandit. Chocobambus does have the red, um, almost has the red for a nuke, but they're not tier 3 yet. But they have Fusion Gun, they have Bright Lance, they have the Falcon, they could all put some dents into the Land Raider. Is it going to be enough though? It's a big ask, it's, it's a much bigger ask to deal with a super unit in a 1v1 than in a team game. Rangers almost got attack model I think there, oh Stern God model even. Boom, boom, boom. 21 red for taking out a stone guard. I wonder what is this guy up to? Just getting a bit closer. To look at stuff. Call out the targets, you know. I'm pretty sure snipers in the real military do not often act completely alone. They have like a, a scout buddy, a, a target spotter with them. To call out hits and make adjustments and that kind of thing. I think that's right. Maybe it's different for different militaries. 258 to 118. They're trying to stop the Banshees from bashing, but there's only two of them. Land Raider is about to be up. But they're fully power bashed and pinned back here. Although Chocobambus hasn't really pushed hard 
to take the midway points on the flanks. There's a powerful sweep. And there's your land raider. Twin need to sort cannon and multi melter on top, and the flame storm cannons allows it to reinforce retreat and heal up around it. You can also jump inside to avoid things. There's tier three for Trucobambus. And they have the red for a nuke. Nukes cost 500 red. The Eldar one is the Eldritch Storm, which is amazing for taking large vehicles out. Not only does it do a chunk of damage, but it disables the vehicle. So it's like the anti-land raider weapon that you want. There's that assault cannon scaring off the rangers. I mean, it would scare you off. Scout's looking for a grenade. Sneaky little grenade. There it is. On the Bright Lance group, it's not going to wipe them out, but shotguns might. The Guardians should be tying them up in melee here, I think, but they did not. They got rid of them, I guess. Land Raider being super aggressive. That multi melter on rear, rear armor shots on the Falcon, even though it has the, the energy field. There's time field into an Eldritch. It's disabled the Land Raider. Oh, Bright Lance needs to move. And it needs to have Guide on it or something. Farseer can get an anti-vehicle weapon. Is she getting it? No. Need to put guide. Where's the guide on the Bright Lance? It's much better use of your time than trying to hit it. It is going to go down. Fusion gun Autark helping out as well. Just, yeah. Questionable decisions, I think, from Bandit. They got very excited about their new land raider. I mean, a tech queen would be pretty excited about it, I think. 232 to 74. Got some Terminators now for Bandit. Storm Bolters and Power Fists. And uh, I think those Storm Bolters are like 40 DPS each or something. It's a lot. They tear through light infantry pretty well. Stone Guard, meanwhile, got a cap. And look at this. Tripled for Bandit. 204 to 74. Map looking very red, actually. I mean, a Land Raider pushing through. Certainly opened up space for capping, but I don't know. I think they could have, should have kept it mid. Should have kept it mid. Farseer's level four. Rangers getting shots on these fellows. Need to be careful, lads. They very much want this cap for the Emperor, but but they might die doing it. One more burst of damage. Down they go. Bandit down down to two squads, and the Stone Guard might wipe. Three hit points. Two hit points. They get away. Terminators of the Cyclone Missile Launcher. Oh, they took out the Falcon. Well done, fellas, with their power fists and all that. Need to cap the mid. Held up. So the Guardians are going for it. Banshee's in on the Terminators. They'll do a lot of damage with their power swords. They just took down the uh, the Farce here. There. There's the jump with the heal and the damage buff from the Autark. She also provides a damage resistance aura, which is handy. And she's doing tons of damage to the Terminators. Probably going to get the wipe here. They're getting chunks of XP for this as well. There's high powered shot. Or Tark. With another one of those jump buff things. Where's the cooldown on that? I guess not very much, eh? Terminators down. Bandits now got some scouts. It's amazing that they're doing as well as they are here. There's another powerful sweep. They have got a lot of good usage out of it in this game. Shotgun blast. Didn't get all the Banshees though. Banshee's just streaming through with some really good Autark support. And they're going for the wreck point. Autark will go for the VP. And maybe that's enough for Choco Bambus. Rangers need to be in the mid to stop caps and stuff. There's one of them. Where's the other one? Oh, they're capping. Fair enough. Farsi can also just throw down time field to frustrate things trying to get to the mid. I feel like they could have pushed onto this VP and... Just area denied bandit here, but they might not know that they're down to just two units. We've got spirit stones on the way. You tried, says Choco Bambus. Can't stop the might of the Eldar. There's that spiritual rights heal. And there's the time field. Can't attack when you're in the time field. Slows you down as well. And a special. Two to one for Choco Bambus. Another special. Look at that. Looks like Bandit just got the Land Raider for fun. I mean, 
It's often the case in these 1v1s that players aren't playing super seriously. It's like if it's not a tournament or something, you know, they're trying things out, having fun. They might have been playing for three hours or something. So Stone Guard survived, but Choco Bambus is victorious. And we had a level 5 Farseer looking quite dapper with her, I guess, Autark wings. Where is the Autark actually? Are they exactly the same wings? I imagine so. You know what? They aren't. They aren't even wings. Well, isn't that cool? I always assumed they just, like, took the Autark wings and put them on the Farseer, but they actually fashioned something out of something. And we have a level 3 Tech Marine down at the end. There you have it, guys. A strange 1v1. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.